So the ready-mix concrete industry was really the first to step up to the plate to support the program. But what we've learned in the last 15 years is that the industry is much bigger and the players uh, involved in this program now really transcend the entire construction industry uh, that relates to concrete. So what we've done is tried to marry the original curriculum with new tracks. So a student can start identifying with potentially the precast industry, the block industry, the cement industry, uh, any sort of material, and start taking classes while they're still an undergraduate. So we have two tracks, the overarching tracks in production sales and service and concrete contracting. And a student can come out and pursue many job opportunities within each of those tracks. They decide that about their junior year, so it gives them a chance to take a few classes in concrete, go on an internship, and then really see where they're going to end up in the industry. So to have a, a focused program like the CIM program at a university was really the brainchild of several industry members. It's not common for an academic university to uh, give up ownership of an academic program to a set of industry uh, consortium. So the, the university has found that having the industry on an advisory board is kind of a common um, element that you see at different universities, but CIM takes it a step further. CIM involves the industry in the classroom. Uh, we're commonly on field trips. There's a, a, a level of ownership that the industry is allowed to have, which is unknown, I think, in any other degree program. So the partnership is, is really on a time basis. The, the industry is giving them their time. It's giving them their talent and ultimately their treasure to ensure that the program is able to thrive and survive uh, long term. One of the things that the industry is very good at is hosting our students, not only at their events, but then turning around and coming to the campus. So we have this great relationship where we're in their backyard quite often, like here at World of Concrete, and then they end up coming to visit quite often to try to see the pulse of the program on an individual basis and sort of a group understanding of how can I get involved as a company. And every company has a different reason to want to be around CIM. We have companies that come in and, and pluck a new employee, and we may not see that company for another year or two, but they are extremely happy with the product and they're happy to have that relationship with CIM. But there's so many ways to get involved. We have companies that have alumni, and they're great about setting those alumni back as testimonials and guest speakers to say, this is what you're gonna be in two to three years. So that, re that constant relationship of the alumni being the champion, the company's great at supporting. There's other ways to get involved. Every, every university has their own individual fundraising efforts, local fundraising efforts, and companies are great about sponsoring skeet shoot fields and golf tournament holes. And, and so there's a local emphasis that really brings the industry together all in the name of education. The other element would be just being around and, and potentially having uh, students come and visit their site. Uh, site visits, job site visits, field trips, those are really where rubber meets the road for the students. They really see in, in live and in color what the industry is going to be for them. So they understand where they fit and then they understand the personalities at play. So a company can really get involved at a lot of different levels. Uh, we, we appreciate when companies come in each year and, and keep that brand in front of the students consistently. When a company is able to make that connection, then that name of that company resonates with the students. And so we tell the company, don't go away and not come back because these students change every year. We have new faces and we need to know that those companies um, you know, are behind us. And so that constant interaction at the local level, the regional level, and then here nationally uh, really makes sense for the program. So when a student comes out, uh, we have given them already four years of an introduction to the industry. And it really is on them to draw from their internship and meet with companies early in their academic career to really solidify what, what's going to be a good job for me. A common entrance point for our students on the production sales service side is quality control. That really is a great entry point for the understanding of, of the business. And so if they can get in on a QC role and then grow with the company, uh, maybe potentially enter into a management trainee program, maybe enter into a sales training program. But the QC platform is a great jumping off place for our production sales service side. On the flip side, we have our concrete contracting, and a great entry point would be somewhere between estimating and assistant project ma management. Maybe having some sort of introduction to a couple of aspects of the program or the company that they can jump in and, and be helpful right away, uh, shadow some people. Um, that, that usually is a great place for a concrete contracting entry point. So the CIM program is housed as a Bachelor of Science. We're in a College of Science alongside engineering and physics and chemistry. So the science of our industry is very important. But the industry could not see this program to fruition without a business element. So all of our students get a business minor. 
That introduction to accounting, finance, information systems, management and marketing is really crucial for our students to make both technical decisions but also business decisions for their company. And so that marriage of those two really puts a student out there as a valuable asset long term with an organization. So at the university level we have all sorts of students coming back and, and trying to find their way uh, through the academic walls. And what we find is that both veterans, uh, non-traditional students, students that grew up around farming uh, and, and maybe had a family member in construction but maybe just didn't identify with the construction industry coming out of high school, we're finding that those graduates are being able to um, offer a level of maturity in the classroom that I think an employer is looking for. So we, we tend to want to pursue the seniors out of high school uh, because that's the common age range that comes to university, but we're having a lot of success with non-traditional and, and again veterans that really can um, be a product for the company right away. They've got that extra level of maturity and focus that an industry needs. And because there is still somewhat of an age gap with upper management, middle management to our CIM graduates, we find that they're filling positions um, that maybe our, our uh, traditional alumni, our 22-year-old alumni can't fill right away. So we're very fortunate to have 10 trade associations support the program. And basically they've put their seal of approval on CIM saying, if you need something from us, a publication, a resource, you need to come visit a member of our association, our doors are open to you. And one way we keep that relationship alive is by visiting them at their trade events. All of them have annual, sometimes biannual events that we're invited to. It's really just a nice open door invitation to say, you know, students, you can sit here with this president of this company and have breakfast and, and really talk about your dreams. And, and they can let you know what they think about um, pursuing CIM and how it might fit into their company. So we're very fortunate to have the funding from the National Steering Committee to be able to take those students on the road. And there's nothing like having um, a roundtable discussion with a set of contractors that are talking about um, you know, day-to-day -day problems and a student getting to sit and really absorb that um, and take that back to the classroom. So I, I, I can't do away with the idea that we're able to come in and sit and mingle and, and network with organizations really at the level that I think is unrivaled at a, at a 20 year old um, college student. Um, they're taking their career seriously from day one that they enter CIM program and they're able to network with, with people in the industry that are movers and shakers at such an early age. And the one thing I always tell the CEOs that are so great at gracing, gracing us with their presence at our university is, is you know, we're, we love that you're here, we love that you lend your time. Um, but they all want to be you someday. So, so you've got to give them the, the message that tells them, you know, where do you enter into the industry and, and what are the steps to be successful? Because um, if they start resonating with your position, they may miss the whole boat. So we love when they come, but hey, bring an alumni with you. Bring somebody that, that is young and, and you know, maybe has been with you a year or two so the students can see, here's where you start and here's, hey, I may end up somewhere um, in that um, management role someday. So it's really exciting to see the relationships. The industry's been very gracious hosting our students at multiple events. Uh, we travel to about a dozen trips a year. We take anywhere from four to 10 students um, to every trip that we go to. World of Concrete's our biggest. We take 25 students annually to World of Concrete. It's not hard to get students to sign up for a Las Vegas adventure. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the companies and the industries really make sure that they spend time with the students. They, they see our, our colored shirts from our home universities and they flock towards them and they realize that, you know, that, that student's here because they want to be here and they want to interact. And so the conversations that occur and the, the business card exchange, our students come armed with business cards and it's exciting to see those happen, those conversations happening and, and the follow-up. The students will come back from the trips you know, hand over a bunch of business cards to me and say, look at all these people I met and, and I'm going to follow up with them. And, and somebody offered me an internship while I was at World of Concrete this time. And those things are coming to reality. It's not, it's not empty promises. The industry needs those warm bodies and it needs those bright minds and those young people in their organization. And the, and the, the students come armed and ready to be employed. So all of our universities are state-run universities. And, and traditionally, those state organizations um, manage all of the personnel uh, the, the important aspects of running an academic program, paying the, the faculty and the staff and ensuring that you have the infrastructure that you need on site and, and making sure you have your basics. Uh, and that's what the state uh, manages to do for all four of our universities. We have great state support. We have wonderful administrative support. 
But at the end of the day, the program that we have is really an industry-driven program. And it's, it takes a special element um, in and outside the classroom to, to really be CIM. And what the industry has found over the years is that their initial investment into CIM w was so important to get that reputation on campus. So we needed that initial support just to get elevated to a status on campus that the administrative knew that we were here to stay. But what happened after that was this ongoing support that the industry found was really about what makes CIM unique and special and allows the budgets um, to operate in a way that we can get out and, and go to trade associations and we can keep purchasing a, a, a new piece of equipment every year for the lab to be able to do new research because concrete um, is evolving into, into a wonderful building material with so many different technical aspects. So there are these standalone unique items that MTSU and the other three universities need on a, on a yearly basis that the funding from the National Steering Committee allows us to accomplish. Uh, maybe we want to have scholarships for our undergraduate students. Maybe it's a, um, a new piece of equipment in the lab. Maybe it's a research project that allows eight students to work with a company and turn out some results. But there's always some vehicle um, that, that we manage to need at each university and, and every university has their own flavor. We all have different needs and different desires and the industry really just confirms that they are able to provide funding that's unique to each of the four programs. So without the match funding from the industry, um, we would just be another academic program. We would be an academic program that had students and staff, um, but there would be no element of, of industry involvement. And, and that's what really makes the difference for the students. They're, they're entering the concrete business the first day of CIM 1010. Uh, their intro to the concrete industry is their jumping off place. And the, so the four years are with the program, they're seeing industry in their walls every week. And that doesn't come without time, talent, and treasure from the industry. Our relationship with World of Concrete and Hanley Wood has really grown and, and created so many fruits of our labor. We've been really exciting. We've been really excited to have the students not only work our own booth, our CIM booth, and promote the program, which is sort of the most basic thing to do here, is, is promote your own home base. Um, but more than that, Hanley Wood and World of Concrete has allowed our students to get involved with the companies on a more personal level. We have several companies that have hired our students as interns to work the booth while they're here. Let them see a little marketing and sales in action. Uh, let them get a, a taste of what it's like to talk to a customer um, who's thinking of buying something for their organization. So we've got the opportunity of doing company internships. We now have the opportunity of just putting in some good blood, sweat, and tears. Um, our students are able to go outside and work with the vendors and put up mock demos. And we always say our students need hands-on um, hands-on practice. Here's the best place, a week of intensive, immersive hands-on where the organizations are relying on them for grunt labor, they're relying on them for some technical input, they're relying on them to, to maybe perform an ASTM standard on a, on a slab. So it's exciting to see this, the students come away from a week-long immersion and, and really have something to talk about and, and it's something you know resume worthy for them it's also something that they can take back to the classroom and build um, their knowledge base as they go back and, and look through the books so Hanley Wood and World of Concrete has has really found unique ways to involve our students and and really that gives more back to the student that, than we could ever realize they come here thinking they're just gonna walk around and, and look at some pretty neat things um, but what we found is that by putting them to work uh, they're coming away with a much more valuable sense of this industry. It's real common to go to an engineering university and see very high level concrete research being done and that's been um, done for, for decades. You can look, go back to 1950 publications and look at concrete research being done at tier one research institutions. What I love about the CIM programs, all four programs, are immersed in practical, applied, hands-on research. These are research projects that are giving a company a potential answer in a matter of months. Uh, we're able to take a company uh, into our labs and say, what do you need us to look at? And we're able to turn key mix designs. We're able to look at a material, potentially new material or a, a morphing of a different material. Um, we're able to maybe help them solve some business decisions uh, by looking at uh, logistics and looking at a, a feasibility study for them. So we really promise to the industry that not only are you getting turnkey uh, research done, but we're doing it with our undergraduate population, which is also a unique formulation. Most large research projects are done with graduate students. One, two, three graduate students might babysit your project at a normal uh, engineering university. But we're involving 30, 50, sometimes 60 undergraduate students a year into undergraduate research. And what that means to a company is not only are they getting the buyback of a, a great research project, but now that, that 
student is, is really in more understanding of that material and they're able to arm themselves with an understanding of a fiber or a particular aggregate or a new cement or a fly ash product and they come out more educated and more understanding of the options that there are for concrete construction and that makes them a better employee.